Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about bread machines, and we'd like to thank Chuck S. for recommending our podcast. His website has a blog with tips for homeowners, and you can check it out at C-H-U-C-K-S-C-H. M A L Z R I E D dot com. Historians say there's a lot of evidence that people were baking bread around 8,000 BC in Egypt, but it wasn't until 1928 that the first commercial bread slicing machine was manufactured. Hmm. And bakers at the time called it a fad. They were wrong. <laughs> Wonder Bread was one of the first major brands to sell sliced bread in 1930. And by 1933, about 80% of the bread sold in the U.S. was sliced bread. Wow. Red Skelton, the comedian, helped make the phrase, the greatest thing since sliced bread popular, when he said it on an interview in 1952. What is a bread machine? It's a countertop appliance with a bread pan that sets inside the unit. You have one or two paddles at the bottom of the pan to mix and knead the dough, You add your bread dough ingredients into the pan, close the lid, turn on the unit, and it will mix, knead, and bake your dough. Cool. Yeah. What's the difference between a bread machine and a bread maker? Those terms are interchangeable. All the units I looked at did more than just make bread. Cool. Is a bread machine better for making bread than a stand mixer? A bread machine does the whole process for making a loaf of bread. You have one or two paddles that mix and knead the dough, then a heating element turns on and it bakes the dough. With a stand mixer, you're just mixing and kneading the dough. You have to take out the dough, shape it, put it in a bread pan, and then put it in the oven. So a bread machine is a lot easier. You just put the ingredients in a pan and turn it on. Although a bread machine has a limit on how many cups of flour you can use, for most two-pound bread machines, there's a limit of four and a half cups of flour. If you like large loaves of bread, or specialty bread, a stand mixer has more power than a bread machine. And depending on the stand mixer size, most can easily handle a recipe with six to seven cups of flour. Mm. With a stand mixer, you decide when the dough is mixed and kneaded correctly. For a beginner, it's easy to over-knead the dough. With a timer on a bread machine, it takes care of all that for you, so the dough isn't over-kneaded. Although a stand mixer allows you to make hot dog buns, hamburger buns, dinner rolls, and other doughs that you could shape, where a bread maker, you're just making loaves of bread. Okay. How does a bread machine work? I was reading the manual from your bread maker, and they have an outline of the process the machine goes through. You put your ingredients into the baking pan. You select the loaf size, the crust color, and the program. It'll first mix the ingredients for a specific time based on the type of dough. The machine stops to allow the dough to rest, then it kneads it again. The machine stops to allow the dough to rise, and after the first rise, the machine will punch the dough down. Then the machine stops to allow it to rise a second time. The machine then shapes the dough, lets it rise again, and then it bakes it. And this is a common cycle for bread machines, but it's going to vary depending on the manufacturer and the type of dough you're making. Very exciting. (laughs) What does punching the dough down mean? It means you're pressing or folding the dough to release air pockets and redistribute the yeast, and that improves the second rise and the flavor of the bread. Proofing the dough refers to the rest and final rise of the dough before you bake it. What are some tips for using a bread machine? I read a few manuals, and they say the most important rule for making bread is use exact measurements. They say this is the key to successful bread baking. Well, when you, all baking. Yeah, they say it's really an exact science. Mm-hmm. When using wet ingredients, liquids must be at room temperature. Use only liquid measuring cups. After filling the measuring cup, place it on a flat, level surface and make sure the amount of liquid is exact. Look at it at eye level. Mm-hmm. When measuring dry ingredients, don't pack them down into the measuring cup. Use a fork or spoon to loosen up flour, for example, 
before filling a measuring cup. You want to fill a dry measuring cup with a spoon and then level it off with the back of a knife or a spatula to make sure the measurement is exact. Don't pack it down. And they say never use the cup to scoop ingredients directly out of a container. By scooping, you can add extra ingredients into the mix. The Baker's Almanac says scooping flour directly out of the bag can add up to 30 grams, which can change the texture and the taste. Crazy. Yeah, pretty wild. Yep. The second most important rule of making bread is to put the ingredients into the bread machine in the exact order given in the recipe. You want to add the liquid ingredients at room temperature first. Second, you're going to add the dry ingredients. And last, you're going to add the yeast. The yeast has to be separate from the wet ingredients. They suggest creating a small indentation in the dry ingredients using your finger or a spoon and then put the yeast inside it. You want to keep the yeast away from salt and sugar because it will reduce how much the bread will rise. Hmm. Yeah. Make sure the ingredients are fresh, especially the flour and yeast. Make sure all the ingredients are at room temperature unless otherwise noted in the recipe. And the temperature should be between 75 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperature too cool or too warm can affect the way bread rises and bakes. Wow. Which is wild. Who knew? What is yeast? Yeast is a single-cell organism that converts sugars into carbon dioxide and alcohol. The release of the carbon dioxide makes the dough rise, and the alcohol adds flavor. Hmm. The earliest records of yeast being used was in ancient Egypt. Oh, exciting. (laughs) Is there a special yeast to use in a bread machine? A few of the bread machine recipes I looked at called for instant yeast... Fleischmann's yeast says look for yeast marked bread machine yeast for a bread machine. It's finely granulated to hydrate easily when it's combined with flour, and vitamin C is added to promote good loaf volume and structure. Fleischmann's had the first commercially produced yeast in the U.S. in 1868. They're still around today. Yeah, amazing. You haven't spelled yet in this episode. <laughs> wow, Fleischmann's quite a... F-L-E-I-S-H-M-A-N-N apostrophe S. Cool. Cuisinart, though, recommends using rapid rise yeast when you're using the rapid bread cycle. All right. What else can you make in a bread machine? Depending on the machine and the settings, you can make cake, jam, meatloaf, rice pudding tomato sauce, applesauce, cranberry sauce, yogurt, and pizza dough. Hmm. I saw recipes for chicken and dumplings, beef stew, risotto, cheesecake, and peach cobbler. But check the recipes and recommendations for your model. Hmm. Have you ever done anything in your bread machines? No. (laughs) And apparently I have two bread machines. I went down to my storage locker the other day and found a bread machine in there. Yeah, well, the one I have looks... no idea where that came from. <laughs> well, we plan on making some videos for the YouTube channel. So check out our YouTube channel, <laughs> Fix It Home Improvement. <laughs> Exciting. What are some features to look for in a bread machine? Compare the programs that are preset for the type of bread you plan on making, like basic white, whole wheat, French, or sweet. Look for a homemade or custom mode if you have your own recipe or want to try different types of bread. You can set your own times for kneading, rising, and baking. Hmm. When I looked at your machines, the options for your smaller bread maker are light crust, medium crust, dark crust, whole wheat 1 pound, whole wheat 1.5 pounds, French, fruit and nut, and dough. Hmm. The options for your large bread maker are white, whole wheat, sweet, gluten-free, packaged mix, cake, dough, pasta dough, jam, bake only, and rapid bake. So quite a difference between the two. That's a lot of videos. (laughs) Compare the pan size and loaf size. Most I saw made loaves that weigh one to two pounds. I looked at your two bread makers. The smaller unit can make one or 1.5 pound loaves. The larger unit makes one 1.5 1.5 and 2 pound loaves. A delay setting lets you add ingredients to the pan and it will start later for recipes that have ingredients that can be left out. Like what? A basic bread can be made with just flour, water, salt, and yeast, or flour, water, sugar, salt, and yeast. 
So it's stuff that won't spoil if it's left out of the refrigerator. Mm. You would add the ingredients, put them in the bread maker, set the delay start so the machine will turn on later and you can have hot bread when you want it. Cool. What other features should you look for in a bread maker? Compare the size of the unit if you plan on keeping it out on a countertop or need space to store it. One of my bread makers, obviously, was in this storage unit, right? right? But the other one I keep on top of the refrigerator, and the cats like to sit on it. <laughs> That's funny. Another thing to compare is the weight. So if you're lifting it up high like yes. that, how heavy is it? I don't know. It went up at once. <laughs> and there are two types of units, a vertical bread machine and a horizontal bread machine. Vertical units usually take up less counter space and cost less. Horizontal units make loaves more like a traditional loaf for sandwiches. Compare units whether they have one or two paddles. Horizontal units with two paddles can usually make larger loaves and more evenly shaped loaves. You're going to have a hole in the loaf when you remove it from the pan from the paddle in the bread maker, which usually isn't a big deal. But some machines will have an alarm, so you can remove the dough and then remove the paddle and then reshape the dough, put it back into the unit, and it won't have that hole. But that involves a lot more work. Yeah. Check the cord length if you have to set the unit away from an outlet. Mm -hmm. Compare the watts on the bread maker. Units I looked at ranged from 450 watts to 1,200 watts for a large unit. If you have an older home with a 15-amp circuit in the kitchen... Using a machine and other appliances together could trip the breaker. A 15-amp circuit has a maximum capacity of 1,800 watts, and the NEC recommends only using 1,440 watts on a 15-amp circuit. On a 20-amp circuit, the maximum capacity is 2,400 watts, with the safest load at 1,920 watts. So the watts are a consideration if you have a 15-amp circuit. Okay. The noise level is measured in decibels. The symbol is a lowercase d, capital B. Some bread machines are louder than others. The lower the number, the quieter it's going to be. Okay. What type of pan does it have? If you're looking for a Teflon alternative, select a pan with a ceramic nonstick coating. Regular bread machines have a heating element that surrounds the pan, but there are convection bread makers that have a fan to circulate the air for faster, more even cooking. Cool. How do you clean a bread machine? Make sure the unit is turned off and unplugged. Only clean a cool machine. Never use abrasive material or cleaners on any part of the unit, but read the manual for the cleaning instructions for your model. In general, for the exterior, use a damp cloth to clean it. A microfiber cloth is good. A few manuals I read said clean the baking pan and paddle with warm, soapy water by hand. Don't submerge the pan in water. It can damage the spindle and seal on the bottom of the pan. Hmm. That's on the outside of the pan. Allow the pan to fully dry before putting it back into the unit and closing the lid. Inside the baking chamber, brush out any crumbs. Wipe the surface with a slightly damp cloth or sponge. Don't put heavy pressure on the heating element. If you add ingredients to the pan outside the unit, you're going to reduce the amount of ingredients getting into the baking chamber. Right. How long does it take to make bread in a bread machine? Two to four hours, depending on the model and the recipe. Some bread takes longer to bake. Okay. Are there warranties on a bread machine? Out of all the models I looked at, I saw 90-day warranties, one-year, two-year, and three-year, and some companies have extended warranties that you can purchase, but one year seemed to be the most common. Okay. What are some top-rated bread machine companies? Breadman. It's B-R-E-A-D-M-A-N. Oster. O-S-T-E-R. Hamilton Beach. H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N. Capital B-E-A-C-H. Breville. B-R-E-V-I-L-L-E. Cuisinart. C-U-I-S-I-N-A-R-T, Panasonic, P-A-N-A-S-O-N-I-C, and Zoji Rushi. It's <laughs> Z-O-J-I-R-U-S-H-I. Cool. Do you have anything else to add? Compare the programs. 
Add the ingredients to the baking pan while it's outside the machine so you don't get ingredients into the baking chamber and on the heating element. Mm -hmm. And make sure to add the ingredients in the order that they're listed. Cool. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 16 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.